There is a word from the Lord on today, and it's found in the book of Romans, chapter 6. We want to read verse 13, and then we're going to skip down to verse 19 through verse 23. Romans, chapter 6. We want to read verse 13, skip down. 19 through 23. Verse 13 says, Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourself unto God. For those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Verse 19 I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquities unto iniquity, even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit have ye then in those things whereof ye are not ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now being made free from sin and became servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, yes. but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we want to use for a subject on today, free from sin. All right. Free from sin. And think along this line with our subject, walking in the newness of life. All right. Walking in the newness, newness of life. And this sixth chapter, of Romans, it, it began with the Apostle Paul questioning these are new converts. This is a young church. Yeah. And he's questioning these converts about shall we continue in sin yeah. that grace may abound. And he answered the question as soon as he asked it. God forbid. And then he went on to say, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Paul was questioning uh, this young church because problem had risen up in the church. Yeah. Paul established this church on these foundations. The life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now they're having problems in this church of the doctrine that the church was set up on. Yeah. And when he talked about the life of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' life, he was baptized. Yeah. Did he need to be baptized? No. But he was baptized for our purpose. Yeah. And then they need to know why they were baptized. Well. Can baptism save you? The answer to that is no. So what is the meaning of baptism? Well. Now if Jesus was baptized and we want to be more like Jesus, we're going to have to do the thing that Jesus was doing. Well. So he was, it's what a baptism is the old person going under, staying under and coming up a new person in Christ Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Now they're having problems in the church, and it's not about no baptism yeah. anymore. Yeah. But what that problem not in the church is, is about being a Jew. Yeah. Yeah. What their problem is in the church now is about being Abraham's seed. Yeah. What their problem is in the church now is about who is not, who is, and who is not circumcised. 
What their problem in the church now is we are under the law. All of this stuff is in the past. Yeah. Because we are no longer, it's no longer about you being no Jew. It's no longer about Abraham being your father. Well, well. It's no longer about being circumcised. It's no longer about the law that you couldn't keep anyway. Well. But this is about Jesus Christ yeah. who died and got up early on the third day morning. Yeah. Yes, sir. And if you read through the scriptures, you see that he had to address this thing about baptism. Yeah. And that old person ought to be dead, and here y'all are bringing up all of this old dead stuff. Yeah. And this is what leads up to these scriptures that we are dealing with on the day. Yeah. Paul is telling these converts to neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. Yeah. And the word member here is speaking of your bodily parts. Yeah. Your eyes. Yeah. You know what got David in trouble? Yeah. All right. It was his eyes. Yeah. Your ears. Yeah. And the problem in this church, you listen to the wrong thing. Yeah. Your mouth. James told us about that mouth and that tongue. Yeah. He said it's evil. He said it's unruly. Yeah. And he used it as a metaphor. It's like a forest fire. Well. And it'll burn up anything that's getting in its path. Yeah. Your hands and your feet. Yeah. What you put your hands on and where you go. Yes, this is what he's talking about. You've you got to get your members under control, your body. It's what he's trying to, you worried about the wrong thing. Yeah. Because they should have been walking in a newness of life. Yes, sir. This happened many years, 60 AD is when it took place. Yeah. But it needs to be brought back up yes. today. Yes. He said those that are alive, those that are free from sin. Well. Use your instrument. Use yourself as an instrument of righteousness. Yeah. Come on. My brother, my sister, right now is wrong in this world that we're living in. Yes, sir. Wrong now is right. Yeah. And he said not just any right, righteousness. You find out what is the righteousness of God. Yeah. This righteousness is because you are now free from the law. Yeah. You need to understand about the dispensation that you are now in. Yeah. It's called the dispensation of grace. Yeah. And this grace that he's trying to get them to see that they are not under, they had nothing to do with it. This grace is obtained through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And this grace that he's concerned about them, and we should be concerned about that too. Yeah. It is an unmerited favor yeah. offered through this new dispensation called grace. Yeah. And you're looking back on the law. Yeah. And all the law could do is show you your wrongdoing. But the law has no power to help you when it shows you about your wrongdoing. Well. But grace, this unmerited favor, it came through God's plan of salvation. Yeah. And your sins are forgiven yeah. by God. And there's a reason why God will forgive you. It's no yeah. more that four-legged four lamb blood, four-legged sheep blood had blood and all this. But you have been paid for. And that was the ultimate price that was paid. Yeah. And while we all he's talking to them but he's also talking to us. Yeah, yeah. We all oh. we all were yet sinners yes. and while we were sinners guess what? Christ. 
He died for us. Yes. Wow. wow. We were yet sinners. He's trying to get them to focus back on what God's plan of salvation. Arguing about the wrong thing. Focusing on the wrong. What is our focus on? Even in 2022. In verse 19, Paul say, I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmities of your flesh. Yeah. And what Paul is saying here that he have to speak to them in this manner is because he said, I have to speak to you in parables. That's what he's saying. I, I got to break this thing down yeah, yeah, yeah. to you in parables. Right. Because if I talk to you where I got my doctrine from, you won't even understand me. That's it. That's it. Because the doctrine that I got is not second-handed. All right. My doctrine is first-handed doctrine yeah. that I got from Jesus Christ myself. Yes. And you're too young in your Christian walk to accept that now. So I have to use parables yes. yeah, yeah. for you to even understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. And he also letting them know you what you're arguing about is because of your early stages in Christianity. Yeah, yeah. Concerning all Christians, what Paul was trying to get them to see, you are in a learning process. And my brother and my sister, we just come out of some Sunday school lessons. Yeah, right. That ought to let us know that it is a learning process process. Yeah. What do you mean we just come out of Peter? Three years under the teaching of Jesus Christ himself. Yeah. Who is the living word. Three years of being taught by Jesus Christ. Yes. And after everything he taught Peter and told him what was going to happen. When it started happening, guess what Peter did? Yeah. He denied that he even knew who Jesus my brother, my sister, that that's Jesus doing the teaching. Yeah, yeah. And none of us teachers are nowhere close. Yeah. Because Jesus wasn't just teaching with his mouth. Jesus was teaching with the life that he lived. Right, yes, sir. right before them, and they still did not get it. Yeah. He had been taught, and he denied that he even knew who Jesus was. Yeah. And when they asked him a simple question, yes. are you one of Jesus' disciples? All right. I am not one of his followers. Yes, sir. Yeah. But after Jesus got baptized, yeah. I'm excuse me, after Peter got baptized, yeah. Peter was a different individual. Now, this baptizing that I'm talking to you about, that Peter got baptized, I'm not talking about no water baptism. That's it. All right. All right. He was water baptized when he denied who Jesus was. Yeah, yeah. But Peter received another baptism. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when he got baptized with the fire and the Holy Ghost, yeah. <laughs> We find out that it was a different Peter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And once we get baptized with the fire and the Holy Ghost, oh, yeah. then God got somebody yeah. that he can depend on. The more we grow in Christ, oh, yeah. the more we come beware of the sins of life. Yes, yeah. When Paul talked about those words, the infirmities of the flesh. And that's what he told them about the infirmities. He's speaking of your physical weakness. And along with your physical weakness, you find pleasure in satisfying the flesh. And this thing called lust, once you get hit with lust, Lord have mercy. You can give in to it. If you're not solid in the word of God. Yeah. And even this thing called lust, it should be in the past. Yeah. Because the more we grow in knowledge yeah. of the newness of life, 
these worldly things, we start pulling them off. We stop yielding to our body members and we start giving in unto the righteousness of God. In that verse 20, he says, when you were the servants of sin. Now that's saying something. When you were the servants of sin, we was free from righteousness. Did you get this? That's deep. If you are a servant of sin, and sin is your master, you're free of righteousness. Yeah, yeah. Yes, you're not going to stand for nothing about right because you are a what? Right. Servant to sin. Yes, yes, Could I share with you a, a little metaphor? All right. You was watching the other night a documentary of Bill Cosby. where he was drugging these women uh, and he was having sex with them after he drugged them. Well, there was a split in the program where it was two guys were talking. And he said, it's hard for me to believe that he did that. Because when I look at this Cosby show, uh-huh. when he's Dr. Hustable yeah. and the love he showed towards his wife, I brother's her name is Clara. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And those children that he raised. Thank you so much. He said, that family, he said, I just can't picture him yeah, doing these things. Yeah. And, and this guy said, yeah, he, he, he did. And said, not only that, now, he was cheating on his wife. And, and this guy told him now, that other stuff they say he was doing, uh, and he said, now, nah, if he's cheating on his wife, he said, that's okay. And he said, because that's just the nature of a man. All right, yeah. To cheat on his wife. And he said, if he was cheating on his wife, I have no problem with that. He's just being one of us. That is the way of the world, but that is not God's All right. way. All right, that's, that's it. And my brother, my sister, this that's is what's wrong with the world today. That's that was the conversation they had. Yeah. Yeah. He said it's all right for him to do that. And he said all men do that. But he's a lot. Yeah. 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 And the reason he said that, you know why he said that it's okay? Because he's a servant to sin. Yeah. And he yeah. knows anything about what's right with God. Yeah. It's all right for me of the world to think the more women I got, the better off I am. But is that all right in the sight of God? And if you're doing this and you come into the knowledge of who God is, you'll stop doing it. Find yourself in a war. Because when you do these things, God said that's sin. And when sin controls your life, my brother and my sister, if you are served of sin, yes. yeah. you think it's all right to do, and you think it's all right for everyone else to do. Yeah. Think yeah. I'm macho, I'm somebody big. But your life is being controlled yeah. in a sinful way. Yeah. This is who you are. You are a servant. No right to sin is the bottom line. And the reason righteousness does not count to you is because of who you are serving. Yeah, yeah. It's who you are a child of. Yeah. You are a child of the devil yeah. and you are serving him. Yeah. If you go to John 8 and 34, Jesus says whosoever commits sin is a servant to sin. Yeah. And back to our lesson in verse 21. saying that he used this parable about fruit. He's talking about fruit. He had to use parables to get them to understand what he's talking about. He said, what fruit are you not ashamed of? The way they was living at first. 
They wasn't ashamed of the way they were living. But he told them, look back over your life. Once you give your life to Christ, once you've been saved, look back at your life. Look at the fruit that you produce in your life. Now, my brother and my sister, those fruits are found in the book of Galatians 6 and 19. The flesh loved after adultery. When he talked about fruit of the flesh, in Galatians 6 and 19, the first thing he said was adultery. Well, your body lusts after committing adultery. Yeah. And God said, thou shalt not commit adultery. Yeah. So if you lusting, if you marry, male or female, and running after someone else, and when you get here with that lust, you got to fulfill that man. Yeah. That's one of them he, that he's talking about. And, and not only that, do you know adultery, people don't even consider it wrong no more. And let me tell you what's terrible. For one to be standing up here and committing adultery. Call itself preaching to some people. Standing here in the pulpit. And not only him in the pulpit, but anybody that's part of God's family. And partaking adultery. That is not the will of God. And if you're doing these things, then you're, you're serving the devil. Yes, sir. And we living in a world now where adultery don't even matter no more. Yeah. And we do know if you're not married, that's considered adultery also. Yeah. Now that was the number one thing. Yeah. All right. Now he tells him to check yourself out. Yeah. Check yourself out. I'm going to name some things. See, are you ashamed of these things? Yeah. He said envy him. People are envy you in a New York minute. He said, if you're full of wrath and that's anger, like, like <laughs> envy, yeah, yeah. strife, jealous. And, and another thing, he called it murdering. Not with no nine millimeter. You could murder somebody with your lips. Lip. Yeah. And, and it happens yeah, in sir. God's house. And what he says, check yourself. And if you are doing these things, if this is the fruit that you're producing, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. It's right there in the scripture. I'm not making this up. But then there's some more things. And it, but let me share this for you. He said, these things, you shall not do these things. Because if you do these things, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And Paul said, check yourself out. If you're doing any of these things, you ought to be ashamed of letting this happen in your life. And then he said, the new man that is free from sin, you have some fruit. And he said, this is the fruit that you not produce. Yeah, yeah. And he started with the big three. We all know what the big three is. Right. Love, peace, and joy. Yeah. I'm not going to name them all. But another one is that gentleness, uh-huh. meekness. Yes, and against such there is no law. Yeah. Paul said that these are the things of the fruit. And let us walk in the spirit of God. Yeah. Walk means in this world see you that want to be more like Christians, this ought to be what they see when they see you. They ought to see love. They ought to see peace. They ought to be see joy, gentleness, meekness. This is what the world ought to see when they see God's people. And when he's talking about walk before the world, that's the life that you're living every day. And when you live this type of way, your neighborhood would be a better neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The job you work on yeah. would be a better job. Yeah. 
the children you raise will be better children. And in verse 22, he said, but not being made free. Lord have mercy. Not that you just come up one day and you got free on your own. Now he's talking to this church that's bickering about the wrong thing. And he said, now that you have been made free from sin, we ought to thank God for this because we are no longer a slave to sin. And I want to ask you a question. Does this mean we will no longer sin? The answer to that is no. Because as long as we're in the flesh, we will sin. But it's saying it's no longer that it holds you. You are no longer a slave to it. You are no longer being ruled by it. No longer will you just continue to be satisfied to live in sin. And not only that, Paul is telling you, once you start getting on the right road, you are no longer doing this on your own. Because now, you have someone to help you with sin. Now you have someone to help you through the teaching of the gospel. Now you also have help through the Holy Spirit. You now have the mindset that if I've been free from the bondage of sin, and now I am a servant of Jesus Christ, now I can look and say, God, I understand what your grace is, and I thank you for your grace. I thank you, Lord, for your unmerited favor. I thank you, Lord, that I now have enough knowledge about grace to something that I know, God. God, I never knew this. I never knew that the wages of sin is death. How many people in this world are not aware about the wages of sin? Yeah. The wages, this is a parable. If you have a job and you work on that job for 40 hours a week, when you get that check, yeah. you know what that check has on it? Yeah. It has your name on it. Because <laughs> yeah. you work for it. It has 40 hours on that check. Your name is on it. The 40 hours is on it. And you want to get paid for it. When you sin, your name is written. The time is on the check. And you're going to pay for that. And the reason you got to pay for it is because I earned that. Nobody's giving me nothing. I earned that paycheck. And I earned it because this is what I was working for. So this is what I'm going to get paid for. I earned it. And give me my check. I hope we understand that part of it. Because what you're simply saying is I got what I worked for. And my brother and my sister, the words that I know, if sin be the wages, is death. That's not the end of the story that Paul was trying to teach these people. Yeah. All right. Yes, the wages of sin is death, but, Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord. Lord. Yes, sir. But there's sin. something that you did not work for. And that what you did not work for is free. Yeah. And I'm offering it to you in the form of a gift. Yeah. And the gift of God is free. I did not work for it. I did not earn it. It's a gift given unto me. And the gift is eternal life. And the only way you can get this is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way that you could obtain it. Yeah. Only through Jesus Christ. Yeah. 
And thank God yeah. for the Apostle Paul yeah. when he was over in Romans 5 and 8. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But Paul said this, and it's for everyone that want to come out of the clutches of sin, yeah. stop being a servant of sin, and be a servant of the God who created you, yeah. who made you, who loves you, yeah. who gives you everything that you got. I heard Paul say this, but God commanded yeah. his love towards us. Yeah. Wow. wow! I said, wow! Why? Wow. We were yet sinners. Yeah. It was Christ yeah. who died yeah. for us. Yeah. Because if you sin, yeah. the wages of sin is death. Yeah. So since Christ died for you, yeah. he's paying the price yeah. that we ought to be paid. Yeah. And he did it. Wow. wow. We were yet sinners, yeah. for by grace, yeah. and only the grace of Jesus Christ, yeah. through faith, yeah. and it's not of our own self. Yeah. This is, yeah. this is, yeah. this is yeah. the gift of God, yeah. not no works, no, no. that any man should be boasting about well, this gift. Yeah. But God did this yeah. before we were born yeah. into this world. Yeah. God. Yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> ordained to us yeah. that we should yeah. do good works. Yeah. God yeah. ordained before we were born into the world. Yeah. That we should walk yeah. in them. Yeah. Walk yeah. like his son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. And when we have to deal yeah. with that thing called death, yeah. we don't have to worry yeah. about no death yeah. because he died. Yeah. Yes, he died. Yeah. He died yeah. for your sins. Yeah. He died yeah. for my sins, yeah. but he took the sting out of death. Yeah. He was victorious over the grave. Yeah. If we learn to live for him, yeah. if we stop serving Satan, yeah. stop sinning, yeah. give our life to Jesus Christ, yeah. we could do the same thing he did early yeah. the third day morning. Yeah. He got up yeah. victorious yeah. over the grave. Yeah. Jesus yeah. proved to us yeah. death can't hold you yeah. when you live according to his father. Yeah. My brothers and my sisters, yeah. this world that we're living in yeah. doesn't care anything about God. Yeah. Think you can live any type of way. When you die, you're going to heaven any type of way. But I got news. You can't go to heaven any type of way. Jesus declared, I am the way. I am the life. I am the truth. And no man, no man could come to my Father except he. Come by me. And because of Jesus, and be only because of Jesus, we are free from this thing, my brothers and sisters, that's called sin. And if you are wondering why the world is in the condition that it's in right today, why all of the disease? They call it natural disaster. It's no natural disaster. 
God rides every storm. Every storm. God is still 100% in control. Yes. God said, I can make a river run upstream yes. if I desire to. Yes. And Jesus, talking about hurricane, wind, waves, and an angry sea, all he had to do is say, peace. Yes, sir. Everything. Be still. Yes, sir. And everything yes. is subject yes. to the name of Jesus Christ. And everything obeyed Jesus' name, yes. except, Amen. except, you fill in the blank. <laughs> open the door. Our doors are now open. Except the crown of it.